Hi, my name is Cindy Rang and I'm the owner of the Fabric Patch in Ephrata, Washington. Our website is www.fabricpatch.net. And I want to talk to you today about needle turn applique, the Fabric Patch way. So needle turn applique, not a lot of people like it. People think that it just takes way too long and it's way too tedious, but you know, there's actually a simple way to do it by stitching on the lines. So I don't know how everybody does it. I think that there's probably a lot of different ways to be able to do needle turn applique. I'm just going to show you the way that I do it. I do like having a hand project at night that I can work on. Um, usually it's a project that might be spanning over months because I'm just going to work on it a little bit each night. And I don't really mind something that can be a little bit fussy. There's lots of projects that you can complete in a matter of hours or certainly in a day. And so sometimes it's fun just to have something that is an easy, travelable, I think that's a word, travelable project. So one thing that I'm working on, oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> one thing that I'm working on right now is um, Gossip in the Garden. It's a pattern by Annie Downs. And it's the cutest stinking quilt. I don't know why I didn't bring the cover uh, to show you, but these are some of the blocks from it. And it's just a really fun opportunity to do lots of different handwork techniques. So there's some hand embroidery, there's some hand applique, there is some English paper piecing, there's some chubby Dresdens, some thin uh, 16 plate Dresdens, there's um, hexes, um, there's some fusible stuff, and it's just the cutest little quilt that is just a lot of fun to work on. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you some of those, some of those techniques. So let's look at this block for a second. This is actually this block. And so what happens is when it comes time to transfer the block onto your fabric. What's nice about this particular pattern is that you can have lots of different backgrounds that you're using. So you can see this one here. Um, on this one, I have kind of another little print. And on this one, there's something different altogether. Now also notice that whenever I do handwork, whether it's hand embroidery or hand applique, I always put some sort of a little stabilizer on the back. And it doesn't matter, it might be a um, piece of flannel, in this case it's a piece of cotton batting, in this case it's a piece of polyester batting. It doesn't matter what it is, I just like that nice little bit of texture that it adds. I also like that it adds a little bit of stabilizer. And the other thing is that you can't see any of my trailing stitches. So where I've done a little bit of embroidery here and maybe jumped somewhere else, you can't see that brown thread going around because I have something behind it. And that's true even here, even though my thread kind of, you know, traveled everywhere. So, oops. So, um, so put something back behind your project and um, and again, it doesn't have to be consistently the same thing. You can use up little bits because people aren't going to see that. So on this one, I picked a piece of the vanilla grunge. And then again, I just have this little piece of polyester batting that was just the right size. Now, when I go to transfer my pattern, what I'm going to do is I have two different pins that I've used. I am going to use, for anything that's hand embroidery, I'm going to use this Brown Micron 005. It's the teeny, teeny, tiniest little point. And what happens is when you're tracing that, what will happen is your thread is actually going to be bigger than the, the, the print there. So you're not going to end up seeing that brown. And so I know that everything that's in brown is going to be hand embroidered. You can see I have some stems here and I have some little French knots up here. Everything else, I use a friction marker. Now in this case, I actually use the black friction marker. What we have in front of us is the blue one. Um, the friction marker, I really like it because as soon as I hit this with an iron, let me just show you. When I hit this with an iron, it's going to go away. Um, and it permanently goes away. Um, some people have had some horror stories about it, but I, I don't know what the deal is because I've never had any trouble with it. The friction marker has two different components to it. One is the ink, and then the other thing, it's coupled with this funny little gel product. The two together is what makes it important to be able to have the mark that goes away with heat. It's similar to that technology that we had when we were kids where we had those decoder pens where somebody would write it with the gel and then their friend would go over it with the highlighter and it would show up. It's kind of that same idea so that both have to be present in order to make a mark. Um, 
It is true that it goes away with heat, so if you leave this in a hot car, this whole thing is going to go away. It's also true that at 17 degrees, uh, the mark will come back. So if you want to put it in the freezer, that whole mark will come back. Well, um, some people are upset about the fact that it leaves this funny little gel mark on here. Um, you should not be upset about that because that makes it fantastic because what will happen is you can see here that I have drawn this with my black friction marker but you can see that since this is a really dark green you really can't see the line very well. But all you have to do is go ahead and take your iron and hit that with the iron, you can see that what's happened is the black ink has gone away and it's left that gel mark. That gel mark, you can see as a white line. It's perfect. Now what's gonna happen is that white gel mark will go away with just water. You don't even need detergent, but you do have to wash that off. So this mark comes off with soap and water, this mark comes off with heat. Once you've washed that off, this mark will not come back because the two have to be together. Does that make sense? So anyway, the white mark, people that have complained about the white mark, they just haven't seen the beauty in the fact that this gives us um, a nice light mark when that's what we need. These leaves, these are things that are for the um, this project right here, and we have a video about this. We also have some kits on our website. This is the Quilters Canvas. It's by Andover. Um, the, I don't know if you can see this design very well, but this is a pattern that's by Laundry Basket Quilt. She's printed onto a piece of linen. It's a 20 by 20 piece of linen, and it has this really nice, um, um, there's some bias stems on here. There's just a few flowers and a whole bunch of leaves. So this is a great opportunity to be able to practice your needle turn applique if you want to go ahead and um, put this together and work on this. So it's easy enough um, just to go ahead and trace all of these. We actually have a kit with all of your fabrics, everything that you need for um, except backing for $39.99 on our website. All right, let's get back to this. So what we've done is I have my pattern trace, whichever pattern that you're using, it doesn't matter. And then I have the other little pieces of fabric. So just like I had the leaves on the quilter's canvas, in this case I have these funny little, I don't know what these are, some sort of a flower pod. So what we've done is on this pattern, we've traced this with our friction marker onto the right side of the fabric. It's the right side of the fabric. And then you have a couple options. You can go ahead and take um, your glue stick and you can glue that down if you want to or you can use applique pins or sequin pins. I tend to use the pins because I think that they are, they're nice and tiny. You're not really gonna poke yourself too much with them. And what's gonna happen is if you have to lift things up to see things, you're able to reposition pretty easily. So if you've traced all of your pieces, you put all of those down, and then it's time to go ahead and stitch it down. Now for stitching it down, the threads that I use, I like either um, the little 100, or I mean um, 60 weight thread that's by Superior, it's the King Tut Polyester, or I like this Aurifil thread, this is an 80 weight. And just about everything that you do, you can do with this gray that works great with dark fabrics, or this banana yellow that works really well with everything pastel and light. It's a nice thin thread, You almost it's almost an invisible thread. So no matter how horrible your stitches are, you're still not gonna see your thread because it's, it's hard to see even when it's laying on top of the fabric. The needle that I tend to use is a straw needle. I like a size 11 or a 10. It's also known as a Milner needle, depending upon which company is using it. I like the 11, but um, some people like the 10. The 10 is just a tiny bit bigger. Um, in order to use those, you are probably going to have to use a needle threader just because, yikes, that's a teeny tiny hole, which is what's necessary. You don't want to use a large needle with an invisible thread or, you know, what's the point? Because you're just going to have this great big huge hole there. So you need an invisible needle to go with your invisible thread. So I like the needle threader for that. Your other option, I've mentioned this in previous videos, I like this. It's a little needle dome. It's put out by Clover and it works really nice. If you just want to go ahead and pre-thread a bunch of them, um, you can carry, I think this holds 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten needles that are already threaded and ready to go, and you can just pull those out as you use them and then re-thread it, and that way 
um, instead of taking all of this stuff with you, you can just take one dome. Hopefully that's enough. Um, so you might want to have your backup with you. All right, so we've got everything threaded. We have everything um, pinned down. And then now it's time for do, to do our stitching. And our stitching, it couldn't be easier. All you're going to do is, I've got this one kind of started for us, but it, you're just stitching on the line. So what's going to happen, and I have to um, admit that normally I have um, my little light and my magnifying glass in front of me, but um, and this is sitting on my lap, so since it's on the table, we'll see how this goes. So you're just going to do a stitch on the line. Oh, whoops, let me put my thread through. And we're just doing a single strand of thread, not two. And then I'm going to lift this up and see my little line under there. I'm gonna do a little stitch on that line. Don't be surprised if you're using a straw needle, if it bends. That's the whole idea. It's called a straw needle because it's hollow. And so, um, and then you're just going to pull that tight and everything goes underneath there. And then we're gonna do our next one. And we're on this line. Let's see how that's all going underneath there. Just pull that tight. Look how perfect that looks. And then I'm going underneath here on this line. And it doesn't matter, that stitch C was a little bit bigger than the previous one. It doesn't have to be super tiny stitches. You're just going to go ahead and you're just sewing right on the line. It's like paper piecing by hand. So you're just gonna go around and see what happens is again, you know, even if your stitches are terrible, you still can't see anything, partly because you're going from the line to the line, so everything is matching up, and also because you're using this teeny tiny needle and this teeny tiny thread. Once you're done with everything, if you do happen to see just a little edge of the line that's still showing through, that's what's so nice about using your friction marker, is that once you go ahead and give it a nice little press, that little edge goes away and you have this perfect, perfect edge. So anyway, you go all the way around and then you'll just keep going from from piece to piece. You have everything traced, pinned, ready to go, and it's easy just to go ahead and do your needle turn applique. So whether that's called needle turn applique or, or hand applique on the line, I don't know what it's called, but it's the way that I do it. It's the way that I find it to be very successful, accurate, and it looks nice every time. I also actually even find it relaxing. So happy stitching.